Today, good news for patients with hard to treat CLL, a twist in the U.S. biosimilar story, a look at the cost of cancer treatment, and gearing up for the American Urological Association meeting. All this and more starts right now on OncLive News Network. Hello and welcome, I'm Laura Jones. First, the FDA has granted the BCL2 inhibitor, venetoclax, a breakthrough therapy designation for the treatment of patients with relapsed refractory CLL who harbor a 17P deletion. Reports from Phase 1B trials at both ASCO 2014 and ASH 2014 shared objective response rates near or above 80 percent, even in the difficult-to-treat CLL with 17P deletion. Venetoclax has also showed promise in AML and is being examined in other hematologic malignancies. In March, we shared great news about Xartzio being the first FDA-approved biosimilar. Unfortunately, a pending legal decision has put a damper on the initial excitement of this landmark approval. In October 2014, Amgen filed a claim stating the failure of Sandoz to provide proper documentation prior to filing for the marketing of Xarxio. The lawsuit was initially dismissed in March 2015, leading to an appeal that has blocked Xarxio from entering the market until a final decision has been reached. This court date is scheduled for June 3, 2015. The final ruling on this biosimilar case could set the precedence for future biosimilars. Cancer treatment has evolved drastically over the past decade. Targeted therapies, immunotherapy, and T-cell engagers. Combinations, sequencing, and maintenance therapy. The complexity of cancer treatment has increased along with the price tag. According to the 2015 Global Oncology Trend Report by the IMS Institute for Healthcare Informatics, in 2014, spending on cancer medicines jumped 10.3 percent in just one year to reach the $100 billion threshold. Of 88 cancer drugs marketed in 2014, 40 were for single indications and 48 for multiple indications. Targeted therapies now account for almost 50 percent of total spending, and the outlay in this sector has been growing at the annual rate of 14.6 percent over the past five years, according to the report. Continued development of cancer treatments must be coupled with continued monitoring of treatment costs for both the healthcare system and the patient. Finally, this year's American Urological Association annual meeting is currently taking place this week in New Orleans. Next week, we will share some of the pertinent data coming out of the meeting. Dr. Neil Shore, medical director at the Carolina Urologic Research Center, cues up some of the research he and his colleagues will be presenting. Yeah, so um, uh, we'll be presenting the results of a large phase two trial that I was the uh, global uh, co-PI on with my uh, colleague Axel Heidenreich from Germany. The terrain trial was approximately 375 patients where we did a head-to-head -head trial in M1 CRPC patients um, of uh, enzalutamide versus bicalutamide. Um, the patients could not have shown any signs of uh, uh, progression or, uh, on prior bicalutamide. So it was a truly head-to-head -head trial saying, okay, uh, let's, let's, see, let's see which one is better. We actually started this trial before uh, the prevail data, the big phase three trial, which clearly showed the benefits of enzalutamide prior to chemotherapy had even been completed. So um, it, earlier results uh, were presented at EAU. We'll be presenting some additional results regarding PSA kinetics and quality of life impact. So that uh, will be at the, the plenary at a, a late breaking science presentation. So we have a presentation on um, uh, combining our, um, um, the results globally of the early access program on radium-223, and it gives a very nice uh, I insight as to combination therapies that were already used in the real world. Um, so we're presenting that data. I have a, a, a presentation on bone tumor markers of uh, uh, not just on prostate cancer, but several other metastatic uh, phase three registries that we looked at in terms of the prognostic implications of bone tumor markers uh, with regards to the use of anti-resorptives. 
Uh, so we're presenting that as well. Uh, we have a, a, a nice presentation that was also accepted on ARN509, which is another androgen receptor signaling inhibitor. We'll be presenting our results of a phase two study in patients who had M0 CRPC disease. We'll, look, we'll present the tolerability, the safety, as well as the, the, the PSA responses, as well as radiographic progression for those patients. We invite you to watch the entire interview with Dr. Shore, during which he discusses preventing, identifying, and treating bone metastases in prostate cancer. Just visit the website on your screen. And that'll do it for this week. Thanks so much for watching Onc Live News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.